just come in. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. For this month's favourites video, I thought I'd film in the latest Premier Inn that I'm staying in this year. And this one's in Guernsey, a relatively new one for the chain as well. And it's just the same as you'd expect from any other Premier Inn, really. It's a nice and comfortable, does the job, and there's breakfast every day, of course. Staff are very helpful with me. The only difference I have noticed is that of the four days I'm staying here, on two mornings, they haven't been able to offer cooked breakfast, only continental, which is fine. I'm still happy eating that anyway. But, you know, otherwise I've had cooked breakfast the other two mornings. And, yeah, I've just been perfectly happy staying here. That's not an ad for them. They haven't sponsored or gifted me to say anything about them here. There's a couple of things later in this kind of video and the accompanying blog post in which there's a lot more detail than I ever could mention in these videos. Um, there's a couple of things that I have been paid for, um, not to mention here, but I will mention the fact that I've been paid for them anyway, just for transparency. But yeah, Premier Inn here in Guernsey is perfectly nice and it's been lovely to see my friend over here. It's been five years since I visited the island, not five years since I've seen him because he's been over to the UK since then, but five years since I've been to the island. So it's been lovely to come back and look around again. And yeah, I've had a lovely time. We had a pizza and poker night um, with my mate and some of his mates from the island. Some of them I hadn't seen for a long time as well. So it's nice to get all together again and have some food and drink and card games and just lots of banter and laughs. It was a great night really. And then on another night, my best mate and I went to his local bar for their Halloween quiz night and we won, <laughs> amazingly, just the two of us against five other teams. Some of them were like teams of four and three, but no, as a two-hander, we managed to win somehow. And we did win a few raffle prizes as well, which I gave to him. There's nothing there that I wanted. So yeah, we did well that night and we enjoyed that. My friend's also got a guide dog as well, who is absolutely adorable. I absolutely love him and he's very happy with me as well. He loves the attention and everything. And he's very hardworking. They're amazing animals, guide dogs. So yeah, on one morning, my mate and his guide dog met up with a friend and their dog, not a guide dog, just an ordinary dog in that case and went for a free run. We took them along to a nice grassy area by the coast and they had a good free run together, the two dogs. So that was lovely. And we've taken the guide dog out for some other walks as well, of course. So he goes out for a walk every day. And yeah, we've had some nice meals out as well. Myself and my mate I went to a place called Moors in St. Peter Port, which is a hotel where they've got a lovely restaurant. And we had a lovely Sunday lunch, a nice bit of sirloin in there. Massive dinner it was, two nice big pieces of sirloin and a huge Yorkshire pudding and roast potatoes and all that jazz. So that was very, very nice. And it was a four course meal for 24.95. So we had four courses all together. Lovely, very, very filling. And we also went to Hotel Jerborg on another day as well, where we also had a lovely meal. We had chicken tikka masala on that particular day with uh, rice and two big slices of naan bread. And then we had a lovely uh, crumble for dessert as well. We got lots of lovely cakes in there. So yeah, we've done all that stuff and had little walks around as well. And yeah, it's just been lovely to just see him again and just relax and you know, get away to somewhere like this. It's a um, lovely place, Guernsey. In terms of other places, I've been to Brighton as well this month. My aunt took me down there for a day trip to show me around because she likes to visit the place quite a lot. I have been there a long, long time ago when I was a kid, but I don't really remember it. So it's nice to go down there with her. She was able to show me how easy it is to get there from London Bridge and then some of the things you can see. Only kind of scratching the surface. There's loads going on there. I was aware it was a very vibrant place, but... Uh, nice to actually see it and see how busy it was even in the middle of the week so yeah i'm gonna to have to go down there for perhaps a weekend or something just having a more thorough look around but yeah we had a little walk along the coast and up and down the pier and stuff like that and saw some of the shops and things and had a nice uh, toasted sandwich in marks and spencers so yeah that was a nice day out as well that was good i've also been out to the welcome collection for the opening of their new exhibition in plain sight now i was paid for taking part in the focus group for that exhibition, but um, they haven't paid me to mention anything. But it is a good exhibition. It's all about sight and vision, how it's been interpreted in the past and how it might be interpreted in the future and everything's like AI and stuff like that. So yeah, there's lots of artworks in there and there's some films to watch and there's glasses and medical equipment as well because it is a medical museum. And yeah, there's lots of interesting bits and pieces in there. And there's also an audio guide as well. You can scan a QR code with your phone when you go in there or you can pick up one of their devices, which we had trouble with on the opening night when we went there, but I'm sure they'll get that fixed and there's also a large print guide as well there's also a british sign language guide as well which again you can get on the website as well via that qr code on the wall and there's also a nice tactile pathway on the floor as well that you can go around the exhibition with following and there's stops along the way on that tactile path where you can listen to the relevant audio description tracks or the british sign language tracks so yeah it's um, really nice and accessible it's very interesting it's well worth a look it took me a good couple of hours or so to get around it because i got quite absorbed in it so that was good so i enjoyed that in terms of something else i was paid for as well i'm a member of a research panel for a company called Open Inclusion and they uh, look at making various things accessible you know various companies can come to them and say hey can we talk to some 
of your panel about their feedback on making things accessible. So I've already uh, spoken to representatives of a major broadcaster about their online video player. I was able to give some feedback on some of their prototypes for that. That was a couple of months ago, which I've since been paid for. And I've also been paid for the research I did this month, which was into virtual reality games, which was uh, very, very interesting. Never played VR games before. I wasn't sure if I'd get motion sickness or be able to see what I'm doing or anything like that. And yes, there were accessibility issues in terms of how well I could see things, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And once I got the hang of things, you know, the researcher pointed out one or two things that I couldn't quite find. Yeah, I actually got quite into them. This wasn't for one particular developer. It was just a general kind of overview to try and create general guidance on accessibility, just like you have WCAG guidelines for websites that, you know, determine how you can make websites accessible. There isn't anything like that for kind of VR and augmented reality AR games. So they're just trying to put together suggested guidelines for that. So that was very interesting and yeah there's no motion sickness or anything because we only had short sessions on the games so that was really fun it was really interesting so i'm looking forward to seeing if open inclusion send any more things my way like that and then something else i've been paid for is from a local support group where i live in east london called enabled living and they've been doing a campaign on alt text whereby you add descriptions to your images on social media on websites and things so i made a few videos for them which you can find on their twitter feed i've put them in my blog post as well so they paid me for filming those videos and they also paid me for my input into the design of the campaign to begin with as well they consulted me on a few ideas they had so yeah that was very kind of them to do that i've also been involved in a campaign for the rnib which is unpaid but i'm perfectly happy to support them because they do a lot of good work and this is see the person not the sight loss basically so don't just see us as people who have a disability we can do all sorts of things there's lots of misconceptions and things out there but it's a very kind of positively themed campaign it's not um, a campaign that's necessarily asking you to take pity on us it's asking you to support us and include us and stuff like that so i filmed a little video for that just you know talking about the fact that you know we we have lots of skills and talents so you know, don't dismiss us or fear us so there's a lot we can contribute to the workplace and society in general so yeah i've included that in the blog post as well for the rnib and there's various other bits they're doing as part of their campaign there's a great tv advert and various other bits and pieces going on so do go and follow them check that out and then i've also been asked to write an article for red disease uk's blog on their website about aniridia what's been like kind of growing in confidence over my lifetime while i've had aniridia so it's been nice to get that represented again to raise a bit more awareness for it and also talking of aniridia on the 8th of November, I'm going to be on Anna Ridger Network's stall at the Site Village Exhibition in Kensington in London. So if you are coming along to that to check out all the various stalls there and equipment and things, then pop along to Anna Ridger Network UK stall. First time we've had a stall there. Come and say hello. Yeah, it'd be nice to see you. In terms of other disability things, I've also had a couple of messages from a couple of people as well asking to give a bit of a shout out, promote them a little bit. There's Seeable Holidays who do supported trips for visually impaired people. I've never been on a holiday with them myself, but I know one or two people who have and they've had a great time. So yeah, Seeable Holidays are trying to get themselves back in business more again now the pandemic's over everything's opening up again so you know do go and check them out they do go to some lovely places and then there's also ellie Woolwork as well who is an actress who's the impaired actress she's literally just messaged me before i filmed this so i haven't had any chance to really look at this properly so i'll mention it in my blog more but there's a new film she's involved with that she's looking to promote and it's all about kind of lgbtq awareness and to do with visual impairment as well so i'll put more details about that in the blog post because i don't have the details to hand right now but i'm fairly happy to give her a shout out as well because i was already aware of her name so so yeah, that's all the disability kind of things, accessibility things. It's been quite a busy month on that kind of front as well. In terms of going out to do other things as well, though, I've also seen a couple of stand-up comedians as well. I've seen Dara O'Brien at the Hammersmith Apollo. Very, very good, of course. Great to see him live in person for the first time. Very funny show. And I've also seen Maisie Adam live as well at the Leicester Square Theatre. And she's relatively new on the circuit. She came to my attention on What the Week. And this is why I'm kind of sad What the Week is ending. Because for Maisie Adam and Dara O'Brien and so many other people, I've got into them because of What the Week. It's been a great vehicle for new stand-up comics and even some established stand-up comics that I hadn't really known about before. I know there are shows like Live at the Apollo and stuff. But the thing about What the Week was they could get into like topical banter as well as doing mini kind of scripted routines as well you know in that wheel of news round they do and there's also the improvisation with scenes you like to see in various bits and pieces it gives a good rounded picture of kind of what they like to kind of banter with as well as all their scripted material they can improvise a bit and stuff like that so it's a great shame what the week's ending because they're not going to have that exposure as much now which is a shame but yeah Maisie Adam is very very good and this is her first big proper tour she's had a couple of little shows in previous years like the Edinburgh Fringe and little venues and things but this is her first big proper tour to really big crowds and you can tell she's over the moon about it and rightly so she's uh, clearly very very grateful and clearly having the time of her life doing this tour and she was very very funny um obviously i'm not going to give anything away about her show but she has great banter with the audience to start with for the first section and then gets into her routine for the final hour and 
She's very, very good. Very much recommend her. And also while I was in Hammersmith seeing Dara O'Brien, I also looked up the bench dedicated to Rick Mail, which I've always been aware was there, but I forgot to look for it the last couple of times I was in Hammersmith. But yeah, there is a bench dedicated to the late, great Rick Mail, comedic genius that he was. It's placed almost very exactly in the spot where the bottom title sequence was filmed. Not quite in the same place, but very, very, very close to it. Just down the road from the Apollo, um, between there and the station, basically. I'm glad I found that, because it's easy to walk past on the um, traffic island where it is, crossing the pedestrian crossing and walking straight past it really so yeah, I'm glad I took time just to look at the plate on that because it's quite nicely done in terms of watching other things there's not really else to mention on the comedy front on the tv i did see friday night live which is kind of just a one-off special of the show from the 80s where they had lots of comedians doing different things so ben elton was there and harry enfield and joe brand julian clary and there were some new modern ones as well it was okay i mean there wasn't anything particularly special in there it was nice to see kind of ben elton and harry enfield in that back again they're past their peak but it was nice to see them on the telly doing a bit again wasn't really particularly bothered about the new comedians rosie jones was all right of course and she represented disability very very well but yeah, I wasn't too bothered about the others, but then that's the nature of shows like that. But it was nice to see it back. And talking of alternative comedy as well, I am well aware that there is now a 40th anniversary Blu-ray for The Young Ones coming out soon, which I'm really looking forward to. It's been remastered apparently, and there's loads of new extra features on there, including new audio commentaries and various other bits and pieces, which looks really, really cool. So I'm looking forward to getting that. And then also in terms of other things, I've been watching Doctor Who, of course, The Power of the Doctor, the centenary special for the BBC. Again, very enjoyable. It's nice to see some of the old doctors in there from the classic era, which, of course, you had to do because being the centenary special, you had to represent the BBC's history anyway. So you had some of the old doctors and a few old companions as well popping up. I haven't seen many episodes from the classic era, but I was well aware of who people like Ace and Tegan were. So it was still nice to see them anyway. And then, of course, at the end, we had that big twist with Jodie regenerating into David Tennant. We knew David Tennant was coming back, along with Catherine Tate, because they were doing public filming. They had no choice but to announce it because it would have been obvious. But it wasn't quite clear how they were going to be involved it could have been just a multi-doctor story with a parallel universe thing or a timeline or whatever but no he is actually the 14th doctor for a few specials next year before the next guy takes over so that's gonna be very interesting to see how they explain that and russell t davis is back at the helm as showrunner which is fantastic chris chibnall's been good i think it's taken perhaps a season or two for chris chibnall and jodie whittaker to really settle into what really works best but it's still been good fun all the way i think jodie whittaker has been a good doctor she's had that good kind of fun side to it a lot of it's been quite light-hearted and enjoyable and yet she can still do the heavier drama the emotion when it counts which is great and she and Yaz had a lovely moment together at the end before she regenerated which was lovely so yeah I'm looking forward to see where Doctor Who goes next for its 60th anniversary specials with David Tennant next year and then we move on to another new era with a new Doctor and then in terms of music Queen have released a new song this month called Face It Alone this is a song that they've kind of rescued from their session tapes for the Miracle album and re-engineered and everything so it sounds really nice and you know, Freddie Mercury sounds great as always you know, it's not one of their best songs ever by any means but it's still pretty good and it's nice to have it kind of resurrected and everything and this is from their upcoming box set for the Miracle album which is going to have a lot of session tracks and videos and various other extras on it which I'm really looking forward to I've um, already pre-ordered that so that'll be good and then in terms of another box set the Beatles have released their latest Super Deluxe Edition this time for their Revolver album and there's again various session tracks on there as well however I haven't bought it yet because and the price is too high I think and many other people online seem to think for what you get this time because the price is higher than for previous box sets but you don't get a Blu-ray audio disc this time and there's a CD that's an EP with just four tracks on it which could easily fit on one of the other discs really so it's a bit of a waste of a disc and yeah the price is just far too high really compared to previous sets and what you get in it so I'm going to hold back until it comes down in price it's not an urgent thing to get it really but it would be nice to get it just to add it to all the other sets but just not yet but I have bought the blu-ray of their get back documentary that Peter Jackson did for Disney plus it did come out earlier in the year but it then went out of stock very very quickly because it was so popular so I just held back until it got re-released again it's very very good there's no extra features in the uh, blu-ray set but there are four kind of art cards which are basically postcards with photos of each of the band members on so that's what makes it a collector's edition which i don't think really qualifies it for that title but i'm just glad to have the documentary anyway in a physical form it's nice to have a dvd of that so that's it really in terms of what i've been getting up to and enjoying during the month it's been a very busy month as you can see there's a lot more detail on the blog post as i say um, in terms of all this kind of stuff so do go and check that out for a lot more um, I've also been doing other stuff on my blog as well as you may have noticed I uh, published a couple of posts about Darren Brown's TV shows and specials and televised stage shows that he's done because I decided to binge watch all this stuff after seeing him live because I enjoyed his live show and it was nice to revisit a lot of his TV shows some of which I hadn't seen uh, for quite some time so they've been quite long posts but it's been uh, nice to kind of go through everything like that and I've also 
finished my journal archive post as well. Back in uh, lockdown, uh, the first lockdown, I started sharing uh, posts from my old journals as far back as 2002 when I was at university and first started keeping a diary. Um, not really expecting anyone to be interested and I didn't think it would be something that I would keep doing but it has persisted because people have actually enjoyed um, looking back at what I used to do in the past so I've now completed posting everything from 2002 up to 2016 um, which basically brings it up to the point where I then moved to London which is then when I really started getting into blogging about what I was doing in London um, although I am going to be posting some stuff about 2017 as well because although I did share some of the stuff I got up to in 2017 I didn't kind of write about everything because I wasn't really sure kind of what to write about I was still kind of getting used to kind of what writing style to have and kind of you know how much to share and I wasn't sure how many people would be interested so it wasn't really until 2018 that I started doing monthly favourites posts like this kind of thing so I'm going to kind of go back and I'm going to write proper uh, monthly favourites post to 2017 to kind of bridge that gap between 2016 and 2018 and make everything consistent. Um, so that's not going to be immediate. Um, I've, I've got to do a bit of work before I can post that. But um, yeah, that's my next kind of little project, a slightly smaller project than, the, than all those uh, journal entries I did. Um, but yeah, if you've been reading through the journal post, then thank you for doing that. I'm glad you found it interesting. It's been great for me to look back at all that stuff as well, to go through my old diaries. It's been uh, very, very interesting. It's reminded me of a few things that I'd forgotten about. And yeah, it's just been good. So I've enjoyed that. And yeah, I've got a few bits and pieces booked up for November and December as well already. So the day after I get back from Guernsey, I'm seeing another show. Um, this Guernsey trip was slotted in perfectly between Maisie Adam and this other show. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. But I'll tell you about that in my November favourites video because that show falls in November. Um, I'm also going to see a couple of shows in another town outside London that I haven't visited before. Um, so I'm really looking forward to going there and seeing you know, the place itself as well as the shows I'm going to see. Um, and then I'm also going to be at the Site Village Exhibition, of course, as I mentioned earlier. Come and see us for that on the Anna Network stand where I'm going to be um, helping out. And then in December, uh, my best mate from here in Guernsey, who I've been seeing, and his wife are coming over to London. We're going to all see a show together, so that's going to be lovely. And I'm also going down to Devon to see my uh, colleagues and my ex-colleagues now, but we're obviously all still good mates um, for our kind of farewell get-together because we haven't had that yet. Yeah, I've been quite happy kind of um, not being in the job at the moment. You know, obviously I, I will need to get one. Um, at the moment, I'm enjoying the break. I, you know, I'm still in demand. I've still got people asking me to do things, paying me to do things. You know, I'm still able to go out and meet friends and stuff. So, you know, I haven't just been cast aside like some soggy tissue or something. You know, I'm still in demand. I'm still wanted. You know, I'm still respected and everything. So... You know, I've been able to do things, I've been able to top up my CV with the voluntary work I've been doing and projects and things and yeah, just keep myself occupied and just do some things I enjoy, you know, in, during the week as well as at weekends. It's kind of been nice to have that extra freedom really and get some bits and pieces done at home as well. So yeah, it's been nice to have the free time. I think perhaps more in the new year, I'll kind of look more deeply into kind of the next steps in my career. There's no immediate rush on it because if I say financially we're comfortable and I'm still keep myself busy with various projects as well as hobbies and things like that. So I'm happy. I'm doing well. Um, I know a lot of other people are struggling with cost of living and everything else going on in the world right now. So um, if you need support at the moment, I hope you're able to get it because there is support out there. It's not always obvious where it is, I know, um, but there is help you can get. So please do seek it out and get whatever help you need. And I hope everything works out for you. But yeah, um, for me, that is it. Basically, that's all I have to mention for this month. Um, so Again, there'll be a few more bits and pieces to mention for my next video. But yeah, do go and check out the blog post in relation to this for more detail and keep an eye on my blog for various other bits and pieces too. And I will see you for another video very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.